Seven months ago, this was my first project I ever built. It was a rock, paper, scissors game. Very simple, as you can see. Fast forward to today, I have now built several interactive, beautiful marketing websites. I've built a Mac desktop app that people have actually paid for. And I'm now building an AI email voice assistant for iOS. So I wanted to show you my journey, how I got here and how you can do something similar. So I say build real apps with AI because there's kind of this stigma on the internet that if you're using AI to code, you're building like really dumb, simple stuff or just like to-do lists. But I don't think that's the reality. You can actually build pretty complicated stuff, especially if you're willing to dive into the details. And AI is only getting better. So this is changing by the week as well. So yeah, I, I told you a little bit about my story, but last fall I was like, screw it, I'm gonna learn how to code. There were some people that kind of told me it's a dumb idea. A senior engineer said, it will take you five years so you can do anything meaningful. Six months later, I was able to really get over some hurdles, which was amazing. What was the coolest of all is two weeks ago, a random person that I have never heard of actually bought software that I coded, which was amazing. Um, that software is a Mac OS app called Ebb, which helps you focus. And I can kind of show you what I built. So. This is Ebb. It tracks your time, the time you spend creating, consuming, um, et cetera. It's kind of like a glorified screen time app, but what's really cool is when you enter a fo focus session, for example, I have this profile called No Social Media for one hour. I'll take you through a breathing exercise, get you in the right headspace, and then once you start a session, if I try to go to social media now, like X, it will actually block this. Give me like an inspirational quote. It works for websites and apps. So not the most trivial, and I will say I had a co-founder that did a lot of work on this. It would have taken me a lot longer, would have not been as good by myself. So that's a really big thing. If you can find other people to work with, you can really accelerate even more. But he wrote most of his code with AI. I wrote like 95% of it with AI. So this was mainly generated with AI. And I'm going to kind of show you like the process. If you want to create apps more like this, what you kind of need to do. There's really two crossroads here that I want to clarify. If you want to do an app today with 100% AI where you're not touching the code and you're really not doing anything except telling in the chat what you want, that is a road you can take. And then there's this road of like mostly AI where I, AI is writing a lot of it and like consulting you and helping you, but you learn how to read code. You learn a lot of technical things. You learn how technology works. There's really two roads here. And with, a, with the 100% AI road, like I said, it's you don't want to touch the code. This can work if you're building simple apps just for yourself, for your own enjoyment, for just to use personally, or if you have like an existing business, like let's say you are a workout instructor and you want to like build like a website or something. I mean, you could probably figure out how to piece something together without touching the code, without looking at the code. Um, if you have an existing valuable business, people refer to this as like vibe coding, where it's just like pure vibes. You're just typing away prompts, but you're really not doing any code. There's a lot of really good companies out there that will help you do this. My favorite's lovable.dev, but there's also Replit, Bolt. If, if you're really in this camp where you're like, I kind of just want to like mess around and see if I can create stuff. I'm not really serious about building anything advanced that could like make money on its own. Then these, these are great. Now, if you want to actually build software, like build a software company, build an app that actually makes money, something that is more advanced you're gonna need to learn how to become technical. Um, AI can still do most of the writing and really speed things up, but you're gonna need to learn how to read the code. You're gonna need to learn how systems work, how everything works together. You're gonna have to read a lot of boring documentation, but I can assure you, like, if you go through this, it is extremely rewarding to build stuff that is actually hard to build. And like I said, AI is getting better and better every day, so the bar is getting lower for entry, but it is a fun time. It is a fun time to be building stuff. So this is a little bit about my process. If I, I asked myself the other day, if I were starting from zero, what would I do to learn? And it's interesting that the way that I kind of learned and that I'm learning hasn't changed very much from the beginning, but this is what I would do. Number one, I would learn the fundamentals by doing. One regret that I have is I, I think I watched a little too many tutorials, too many tutorials on YouTube that were like, okay, this is how you build this app exactly. The best way to learn is by actually doing stuff. So this is what I would challenge you to do to learn the fundamentals. Your homework is to build a simple, fun website. This doesn't need to be like an app. It just needs to be like a website that has some sort of interactivity. For example, this was a great first project for me. This, this isn't just like a website it actually has like a game in it where you can play rock, paper, scissors. And it like keeps, it like tracks the score. So build some 
simple website that actually has like interactivity. That's your homework. These are the tools that I'd recommend using just to save you some time in searching. Download Visual Studio Code, which is a code editor. That's where you kind of write all the code and everything. You should use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Google that, learn what these are. Create a GitHub account and Git version control. This is basically like Google Drive for your code. It's a way to like save all your code online. But yeah, learn about it. Learn about what it is and how to use it. And then deploy your website to the internet. You can use, and I forgot to type it here, but you can use GitHub pages. It's free. But yeah, you want to be able to actually share this with a link with someone um, and deploy it to the internet. The rules are you can use ChatGPT, you can use AI and the internet to explain concepts, but not write the code. This is going to be really tempting. You're going to want to like just tell ChatGPT, this is what I want, like write all the code. Please just like hold off for a little bit on that. I really would recommend if you're taking this path, like you got to learn the code to some degree. And like I said before, the website needs to have some sort of interaction. In terms of time, I don't know where you're at if you've ever done any coding before, but this will probably take you like one to two weeks because you really need to dive in to knowing like what these all do. You're writing the code from scratch. You're, you're putting it in your Visual Studio code. You're uploading it to GitHub. So yeah, this could probably take you like a week or two, but yeah, actually like try to build it. This is the best way to learn the fundamentals. If you're looking to get a little bit more into the fundamentals, something awesome that I did, it took me about a month, is the Odin Project. They have this foundational course that is completely free. It's open source. It's awesome. The Odinproject.com is the link, but that helped me learn the fundamentals a little bit deeper. If you want to do that, I would recommend it, but I really don't think you need to. The number one thing with the fundamentals is beware of tutorial hell, which is just getting caught up in this loop where you're never actually building something or writing your own code. You're just watching other people do it. Don't do that. Okay. Step two, once you've kind of like gotten a little bit of the grasp of the fundamentals, this is where I would really start to know your tools. No what is possible and the amazing things out there that make your life like way easier. So the first thing I would do is get this code editor. It's very similar to Visual Studio Code, the one you'll be using in your fundamentals, but it's called Cursor. It basically, and I'll pull it up here, it has this little AI chat app on the side. And when you're looking at your code, you can actually chat with it and it will like edit your code directly. It's insane and it has changed the game for coding. So I would definitely start using this. It's awesome. I would take a screenshot of this as well and save it for later, but in cursor, you'll notice there's all of these different AI models you can use. And this isn't even on the full list. And that can get a little bit confusing on like, which one should I use? An employee from cursor actually posted this the other day, which is like a good way to know like which model you should be using and when, but yeah, I would take a screenshot of that. I think this was pretty spot on with my experience. So yes, use cursor to start coding stuff. It's amazing. Some other tools you should know is for the web. Most everyone is building web apps in React. Learn about React. Learn about the difference between Vite and Next.js, which I think are the best ways to like apply React. Uh, and depending on like the app you're building, you can kind of decide on which one to use. But yeah, I would know those tools. For mobile, if, you're, if you want to build a mobile app, I would use Expo. It's an easier way to get started with mobile apps. But I will say the minute you start to go to mobile or desktop apps over the web, it immediately starts to get a little more complicated. So you might want to focus like your first project on being on the web. For desktop apps, if you want to build any desktop apps that download on Mac or Windows, Electron's a really good tool to get started. There's also uh, Tori, um, but that's a little more complicated in my opinion. So Supabase is an amazing tool for when you want to start having users save things and log into accounts. I would check out Supabase. They're my favorite for that. When you want to actually deploy your website on the internet, GitHub pages really isn't going to be able to handle like bigger apps. There's a, a great service called Vercel, which is a great place to start uh, for hosting and deployment. I'm just going to mention two more. One is ShadCN. This is a great resource for reusable like UI components. I just want to show it because this is one of my favorites for sure. So ShadCN, they have all these like reusable cards and components. You can create charts in your apps. Um, they have these pre-built blocks and dashboards. It, it just makes like the UI building like a UI quicker and faster. So that's a great one. Once you want to try to actually sell this and accepting payment, then Stripe is kind of like the de facto option there. So yeah, knowing your tools, this, this stuff, like one of the first mistakes I see people make is they like use tools or frameworks that are like old and outdated and like a trouble to work with. Don't do that. I would really do your research on what are the best tools to use. It's great to be active too on like X. This is kind of how I discovered all this stuff is just following like software developers and cool people on X and kind of seeing what tools they were talking about. So definitely would recommend that. And then third, this is my final step, build stuff that you want. This is literally the best way to learn and to go from zero to one. Build stuff that you want to exist, an app that you've always wanted or that a friend has wanted that you, you really want to use. 
The reason this is important is because you're going to hit a wall where you are trying to make something work and it just does not work. And you spend hours on it and it's so hard and you're going to want to quit. What has helped me push through that wall the most is building something that I want to exist. It, It really does like motivate you. So start building stuff you want. Another tip I would say is build the UI first. So for example, when I go into cursor and I want to start like building an app, I am going to tell it, Hey, build the UI first. Don't build any of the back end. Just use sample data or dummy data. Just make it look how I want it to look first. This is really important because if you tell AI to try to make your app work hundred percent, like you want it to out the gate, you're going to run into a lot of problems. So I actually usually start with the UI. I start with, this is how I want it to look. And then I start working on the back end, the integrations and making it actually work. So I would build the UI first. Another tip is don't blindly accept everything that AI gives you. Like try to actually understand what it's trying to do, read the code and be intentional about what gets added. AI loves to spit out tons of code. You kind of have to be the one that cuts it down and deletes a lot. And if you just let it run wild, your code base is going to become very bloated and it's going to have a lot of problems. So you kind of have to police it a lot. So like, for example, in cursor, when it adds changes or whatever, it's going to show like you can say yes or no to changes. I would be weary in the beginning when you're getting started. I think building like the framework of your project, just getting started. I think you can just go ham and just accept all the changes. Once your app's actually kind of working and you're wanting to fine tune it, like I would be very careful about it editing anything and I would go like line by line and actually read it. Um, this, this is just like a, a genuine tip on if you actually want to build like apps that work as they get bigger. So another thing I'd recommend is using a separate AI chat as kind of your consultant and teacher. Um, and this is something that's really helped me. So for every project that I have, I have a dedicated chat with chat GBT where I talk about like tech decisions, like, Hey, should we use this framework or should we use this tool? And I also ask it about concepts. So like if cursor spits out some code or concept, I don't understand. I'll actually bring it over here and I'll be like, explain this to me. This is really valuable to like actually learn as you go. And also to kind of have almost like a co-founder that you can bounce your ideas off of. I would definitely recommend this doing this, like the learning, the consulting in cursor isn't the best because in cursor, you kind of want to make new chats every once in a while. You can't just build your whole thing from one chat because it starts to get fatigued. You have to create a new fresh chat. And when you do that, it doesn't have context of everything that you've discussed before. Whereas in ChatGPT, if you just have one dedicated thing in here where you brainstorm the project there, all of the major decisions you've talked about it here, it has context on the bigger picture of your app. So I would definitely recommend having like a separate AI chat as a consultant. The last tip is get a real mentor if you can. I was very fortunate to work with a guy who really helped me learn to code and he would review my code, tell me like what to, what to change, what to improve. And this like honestly made a night and day difference. So if you can work with someone awesome, would highly recommend it. If that's not possible, that's fine. You can use like AI as your co-founder or your teacher, but I think getting a real person that actually cares about you can, can really be awesome. Anyway, so that's just the start. I hope that you can build something awesome and that you can just dive in and start coding today. And um, I'm really excited to see what you build. So hopefully this was helpful. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me and supports me to keep making stuff like this. So have a great day. Bye.